Hi, hello. Uh, I am addressing now all the students uh, whom I will be teaching uh, those two subjects, those two courses. Managerial Economics in the major management and Economic Policy in majors international business and international relations and diplomacy. Essentially, I am addressing in this video mostly most of all my students at the Andrzej Fritsch Modrzewski University in Kraków. Although whoever wants to benefit from my courses, from my video lessons, is welcome to watch and to use them to the best you can. So this is an opening video lecture uh, where I explain like the rules of the game uh, in those two courses which have different names. So one is named Managerial Economics, another one is named Economic Policy, but their meaning is essentially the same. In those courses, I, my ambition and my purpose is to develop in my students uh, the ability, the skills of predicting uh, economic policies from the part of governments. Uh, so let's quickly go through a PowerPoint presentation where I show you the essentials of those two courses. Uh, in the description box below the video, you can find the link to the same PowerPoint presentation which I am using in the video, so you can download it and read it at your pleasure and leisure. So let's waltz. First thing, the purpose. And in order to explain the purpose, I will move myself a little bit. So the purpose is to learn how to predict what the government is going to do about business and economy. Which is, it is one of like essential skills in, let's say, advanced business planning. Uh, because in many projects, especially in projects uh, which are heavily depending, for example, on public investment or on budgetary expenditures or, for example, on the behavior of financial markets. In all such projects, predicting more or less accurately the possible scenarios in public economic policies is uh, very important as a skill. And if after your studies you go into the corporate environment, it will be an important skill that you can demonstrate. So in those two courses, managerial economics, major management, and economic policy in majors, uh, international business and international relations and diplomacy, you will be preparing a project for your graduation, for graduating uh, the course that you will be following with me. And you will use your understanding of economics, management and of political systems. So this is like the, the three basic fields of science that we will be combining in this course. Just to give you an idea of uh, what exactly we will be talking about and uh, what will be, let's say, the essence uh, of our study. When we ask what uh, or how much can a government do about business or what can possibly do a government about business, the shortest answer, which is quite surprising to like a layperson, is surprisingly little. This is a paradox. But uh, whilst governments dispose of incredibly extensive coercive power, governments have the amount of coercive power that most of us has even a hard time to imagine, they can do very little about business and economy. And it is because governments are sort of looped with their national economies. So their national economies are uh, their tax base, the tax base of the government. 
so it is essentially the capital base, the material base on which the government is resting. Uh, so governments depend on the well-being of the economies they try to govern. So I use here that uh, metaphor of riding a horse, right? Uh, I will magnify it. It is like riding a horse. At the end of the day, you can only do what the horse allows you to do. That's the position of governments when they do or implement something that we broadly call economic policies. There are things that government can do, things that work, and things that absolutely don't work, although they look at the first sight like interesting ideas. So now a few words about your project. So the way that you are, excuse me, I moved to the wrong frame, okay. So the way that you are supposed to graduate and to write. So in your project, you try to predict like the next move or the next moves of a government of your choice as regards the policies affecting business and economy. In that respect, uh, I will encourage you to learn how to develop alternative scenarios of uh, events because it is very much uh, what it is like predicting a public policy. You never know exactly what the government will do, for sure, but you can learn how to build credible alternative scenarios. Indirectly, you are supposed to demonstrate your understanding of economics, management and political systems. Now, the form of the project, the general form for the final version of the project, I will talk about the distinction between drafts and the final version a few slides later. Now, the project generally should have the form of an essay uh, and the essay should have a minimum volume of at least 2,500 words. For those who are not quite familiar with the concept of an essay, who don't understand what an essay is, it is an informed, elaborate argumentation for and against a hypothesis stated in the introduction and the balanced conclusion at the end. And the conclusion should address the hypothesis. So in an essay, you essentially demonstrate in a short form that you can use the basic scientific method to assess this particular field of social reality, so economic policies. Now, as for the curriculum and the teaching, uh, here I am developing mostly on the essential drills, how we will work together uh, during this, uh, this winter semester 2020 and 2021. Due to the pandemic, we go largely online, so uh, both courses are largely online, mostly online. And uh, the basic form of online contact between me and my students is a group on Microsoft Teams with meetings scheduled as, uh, as given in the individual timetable that each student receives at the beginning of the semester. So when a class is scheduled in one of those courses, so managerial economics or economic policy, and in your timetable you don't see any room number by that, by that class, it means that we, mean, uh, that we meet on Microsoft Teams. Each meeting on Teams <coughs> started on the scheduled starting hour of the class sharp. So if it is like 8.45 a.m. the beginning of the class, at 8.45 sharp we start on Microsoft Teams. And the basic length of such a class is around 45 minutes. 45 minutes is like the essential time that I need to make sort of a roll call across the group to ask students what is their progress on the project to give directions for further study. 
and uh, depending on the number of questions from students and or the number of current topics to discuss that time can be a little bit less than 45 minutes or more than 45 minutes and the students when students receive their timetables you will see that those classes are scheduled for much longer time than 45 minutes for example for two full clock hours like 120 minutes it is because uh, we want to avoid at the university we want to avoid overlapping between different classes on teams so we want that buffer of time for each class just in case it lasts longer sometimes it happens students have questions we engage into some sort of creative discussion so that the buffer of time is needed in order to avoid overlapping besides if you haven't learned it yet you will learn that when you have classes via microsoft teams or via any video communicator after each class you need like to shake it off a little bit before you pass to the next class Sitting in front of a screen is different from sitting in a classroom and interacting with real people. And you will see that you need that like rest time. Now, another question, important question. Let me just magnify that frame on your right. Okay. Uh, as you graduate with projects or as you graduate by preparing projects, it is important to stay in individual contact with the teacher, so with me. Uh, by the way, oh, I forgot to introduce myself to those who don't know me. My name is Krzysztof Waśniewski and I am assistant professor with the Andrzej Fritz-Modrzewski University in Kraków. My, well, whatever, let's go on. Uh, so you can contact me via email kvasniewski at afmedu.pl You can feel free to use that email for any kind of individual request or individual issue you want to discuss with me. Uh, and now, in case the officially scheduled classes on Microsoft Teams are not sufficient or have to be cancelled, we can arrange new ones, either on Microsoft Teams or via Zoom. So uh, there, are there are many possibilities to stay in touch and I strongly encourage you to stay in touch with me during the semester. You will see why in a moment I will discuss your timing. So your readings and resources. For both subjects, for both courses, so both for managerial economics and for economic policy, I strongly recommend to all my students to grab hold uh, and to maintain hold of a regular textbook in macroeconomics. Anything with macroeconomics written on the cover will do. I am not choosy, I just want you to have permanent access to something, to some reading where you can find and check the basic concepts of macroeconomics. And besides, you are welcome to visit from time to time uh, my scientific blog, Discover Social Sciences. Here at the bottom of the slide, you have the link, uh, which is to find also in that PowerPoint presentation that you can download. Um, I write a lot. Uh, normally uh, on my blog. Right now, as I am recording this video on my blog, I place mostly videos, video presentations, uh, because it is the time to prepare educational material. Anyway, if you rummage a little bit on that uh, site, discoversocialsciences.com, you can find a lot of material there. Now, the timing. So, as for the timing, uh, we have like benchmarks. Uh, excuse me, I have to move it a little bit. Okay. Uh, we have like benchmarks or 
corner or uh, pivotal moments uh, in our schedule. So, first of all, by the end of October or beginning of November, I want you to set your topics for the essay. If you have hard times to find a topic or to define one, you ask me, I help you to narrow it down, I give you some readings to review. There are ways to, to like narrow down and define the line of your research or for your projects. And besides setting your topic, it is the, the moment when you can decide to make teams. Essentially, I allow students either to prepare their projects individually or in groups, in groups of up to five students. Uh, so that's the, the first pivotal moment. End of October, beginning of November, you essentially poise yourself for the rest of the work on the project. Now, from December the 1st on, up until approximately January the 25th, we work at a pace of two-week progress. It is important. Every two weeks, I want to see either on my mailbox or on the notebook attached to the Microsoft Teams group, a draft version of your project or a link to that draft version and that each draft version, each consecutive draft version, which you present me every two weeks, should demonstrate progress. So that makes four drafts in total and the final version of the project as the fifth consecutive piece of work. Now, the final version of your project should be a regular essay so it should have that basic written form. If you feel like adding some video content that you record to that essay, in the document with the essay, you can just place the link to the video material. For your drafts, for those four drafts, you can use whatever form you want. It can be a written document, like a regular piece of written text, it can be a presentation or it can be a video. I'm not choosy at this point. Just take care of nailing down uh, the, right, uh, the right structure and the, and the right line of logic. Now, my criteria of assessment as regards your work. This is pro probably something that interests you a lot. So, I use four essential criteria. Uh, which I split my final mark evenly between. So it is 25% each of those criteria. So one fourth of your grade is like for demonstrable understanding of microeconomics, macroeconomics and management. Uh, another 25% is completeness. It has to be a full essay with the nice logical structure, hypothesis, argumentation and conclusion. The third 25% of your grade will come from the extent of your research. So the more facts and the more external sources you credibly call in your work, you credibly reference to, the better, the more points you get. And finally, the last 25% of your final grade comes from the timeliness and consistency of work. So, uh, when I say four drafts and a final version, it means exactly this, four drafts and final version. I want you to show that you can consistently carry out a project and stick to a plan of that project. Okay, that would be it. As for uh, this introductory lecture in managerial economics and economic policy, so, like, see you, hear you, and write you, and read you during that strange winter semester of, tw of 2020 and 2021. As usually, in the conclusion of each of my videos, I wish you can have fun with science, and I wish you to have fun with your life. Bye!